Today we're going to talk about chromatic aberration. What's going on everyone, my name is Tom from Dread Labs and I'm a graphic designer. Today we're going to talk about chromatic aberration, which is that RGB 3D effect that you've seen on photos and videos lately. If you do not know what I'm talking about, this method basically separates images in three different divisions. And by manipulating those layers separately, you'll get this RGB effect, almost like that 3D effect what you get when you put on these 3D glasses, if you know what I mean. So before we dive into the video, I just want to let you know that you can get all of the project files from all of my tutorials, a 15% discount and many more perks if you become patron of mine thanks to my patrons i'm actually able to keep up the weekly tutorials for you guys because in order to do so i need to do dreadlabs full time if this sounds interesting to you there's a link down in the description or stick around until the end of the video to learn more without any further ado let's get into the video all right so what chromatic aberration is is if we zoom in on this photo for example you can see that there's like a couple of colors shifting and you know like you get that 3d effect you can also see it really well around the edge of the model here in the photo and just to give you an idea on what this photo looked like without any of the effects on this is basically the clean photo and this is the chromatic aberration effect on it so you can use this technique in a couple of different ways but the main takeaway here is that first we need to separate our image into three different color layers all right so i have the original image here and what i'm going to do is duplicate this image twice by pressing command or control j on my keyboard i'm going to name the top layer r the second layer g and the third layer b and if you do not know what these stand for basically these stand for red green and blue i don't want to go into the full theory basically all the colors you can see on the screen are added up with r g and b that was a really quick explanation but i'll put a link down in the description on basically how this works anyways for now all we need to know is how to separate these photos so let's just hide the bottom two and i'm going to double click on the r layer and this will bring up the layer style menu you've probably seen this around but under advanced blending you can see here we have channels i'm going to check off b and g and leave r on and as you can see we already have a red layer in photoshop now i'm going to do the same thing but with the second layer and then we're going to leave g and this will create a green layer and for b same thing with the blue layer on and as you can see this now just looks like a plain blue photo but if we add all of these together you can see that we get the original picture and immediately you will see the chromatic aberration effect happening once i start moving the red top layer as you can see we're moving this around and this will create a really cool 3d effect so the way you want to use this is really subtle for example what we can do is just move this 10 pixels to the left by pressing shift and the arrow keys on my keyboard i'll do the same thing with the b layer but then to the right and as you can see this creates a nice 3d effect but this looks a little bit more glitchy than actually like this smooth chromatic aberration that I've seen because I actually got this request for a tutorial by someone on the Discord. I'll show their references on the screen right now and if you have any suggestions for tutorials don't hesitate to join our Discord and ask me directly. You can also of course leave your suggestions in the comments below. The way we want to use this to our advantage is basically manipulating the photo in a more subtle way. The way I'm going to do this is we're going to start out with the blue layer and then we're going to work our way to the top. So the methods I'm going to use are not set in stone. These are just some methods that I found that work pretty well when doing this effect so the first thing we're going to do is go to filter lens correction and under custom here at the top right we'll just remove the distortion and we'll click on like plus a 20 something around there and as you can see this creates a subtle 3d effect on the blue layer i'm going to do the same thing with the r layer but then we're going to go to filter distort pinch let's see what this looks like yeah this is way too drastic so we'll just do five percent maybe yeah as you can see the more we go towards the middle the more we can actually see of this effect but the thing is like the edges are really really hard and the way i'm going to fix that is by using a couple of blurs so the first blur we're going to do on the blue layer i'm going to go to blur gaussian blur and we'll just do like maybe two pixels and for the g what i'm going to do is go to filter blur radial blur and we have two kinds of radial blurs i'm going to just check which ones work best uh, because the spin basically makes everything in the screen rotate and the zoom basically moves everything away and you get a more similar effect to what i'm seeing on the screen right now but i'm thinking that the zoom actually works a lot better in this case and i'm going to go with an amount of 10 i think that works pretty okay let's just see what that looks like it might be a little bit too drastic so what i'm going to do is double click on the radial blur and change this to maybe three pixels or amount three i'm not sure if this is in pixels or not this works a little bit better and then for the red one what i'm going to do is basically customize where our blur is happening by going to filter blur gallery and field blur so the more we blur this as you can see we get this like hazy red effect on top of the rest of the design i'm gonna leave it like a 10 pixels in the middle and maybe towards like the side i'm gonna make this a little bit larger and so we have a little bit more of a drastic effect around the edges we just put on pins where we want the blur to happen a little bit more and around the model let's just lower it a little bit like that all right so as you can see this gives us a really nice chromatic aberration look something else that you want to take into account if you're thinking okay this is a little bit too subtle and i really want these rgb 
RGB colors to pop, what you can do is basically start out with a black and white image. Uh, and the way I'm going to actually edit this is basically double click on our image. And this will bring up the original image because we're using smart objects, of course. If you don't know what smart objects are or why you should use them, I will put a video about it down in the description because it's really essential to start using smart objects as a graphic designer in Photoshop. Anyways, I'm going to press Ctrl or Command U on my keyboard and I'm going to remove the saturation of this image and I'm just going to press Ctrl or Command S to save this and click OK. We'll just click away at this file and as you can see, our image is now in black and white and you can see these colors a little bit more. Like you can see the chromatic aberration actually happening because that's the only color that you're seeing in the image right now. All right, guys, so there you have it. How to use chromatic aberration in your designs in Adobe Photoshop. So like I said in this video, you can use a ton of different ways in order to achieve this effect. The only thing that you basically need to do is separate the color channels and then you can just get to blurring, distorting. I would always advise you to use some subtle distortion filters because those work the best in my opinion. Adding these blurs can really soften and make this effect a little bit more subtle instead of glitchy. This also works really well on text, of course. But yeah, I hope this video was useful. I hope I got some tips for you that actually work for you. And I hope you have fun with creating chromatic aberration effects on your own designs. So before we end of the video, I just wanted to give a huge shout out to all of my patron members. Thanks to my patron members, I'm actually able to give you guys free videos on a weekly basis. Because in order to create weekly tutorials, I need to do Dreadlabs full time. And because I cannot pay my rent with just ad revenue from YouTube alone, patrons actually help me to make a living with Dreadlabs and give you guys free videos in return. As a reward for becoming a patron, you'll get access to all of the project files from all of my tutorials, which at this point is over 100 PSD files, over 60 Illustrator files, Cinema 4D files, After Effects files, and more. You'll also get a 15% discount in my asset web store where I sell textures, vector packs, and more, as well as an exclusive role in the Dreadlabs community Discord server. If you go one tier up, you'll also get access to exclusive tutorials such as how to start your own clothing brand, how to make a death metal logo from scratch, Adobe Illustrator for beginners, and much more. So if this is something that you're interested in, there's a link down in the description. But if you don't have the budget to support Dreadlabs in that way, leave a like, comment, and a subscribe if you haven't already. It already does a lot. So with all of that being said, this is Tom from Dreadlabs tuning out. Have fun with this effect, and I'll see you guys in the next video.